As an observer, you will ensure the safety of the healthcare provider by helping them to manage the complexity of the critical donning and doffing tasks. You will also provide psychological support during an inherently stressful experience. Observers are responsible for monitoring to maximize safety by ensuring compliance with personal protective equipment protocols, guiding, correcting, and assisting colleagues as they work through the process of donning and doffing, protecting yourself through proper personal protective equipment use during doffing, promoting mindful and steady adherence to protocols, anticipating and planning for risks. To achieve this, you must be a leader, a protector, and a guide who calmly coaches team members through the routine aspects of donning and doffing. As an observer, you will do much more than watch and record. You will be an active participant in protecting the healthcare worker. To do so, you need to customize your participation according to your facility's resources, equipment, and physical layout. You need to understand your local process. For example, healthcare providers will require more intensive assistance doffing certain types of personal protective equipment. How will you balance your role as an observer and leader with the need for physical contact? Will you require a doffing assistant? You will also actively lead and support your colleagues' actions. Only use the checklist as a guide. It is a memory aid, not a tick box. Use it to direct action and sensitize yourself and your team members to risks and adhere to safe practices. As a trained observer, you will be a team leader and responsible for maintaining accurate, complete, and up-to-date situational awareness. To do this, you will need to keep the big picture in mind, manage details, and help healthcare providers identify and avoid any potential protocol breaches. First, keep the big picture in mind. This includes understanding and managing the entire donning and doffing processes where the healthcare worker currently is in the process, what your team members need, and any possible safety risks that have or could arise in a situation. Don't hesitate to give the team members an update on the big picture. It is critical to ensure everyone is on the same page. Second, manage details. This includes the effective completion of each step in the process. Monitoring adherence to protocols is central to the observer role, but be an active participant and use the checklist as a tool. Third, help clinicians identify and avoid potential protocol breaches by understanding the situation, thinking ahead, being sensitive to risks, and proactively communicating with your team members. You should remain vigilant about four factors while leading the donning or doffing process. The situation, team members, environment, and progress towards your goal. Be aware of the situation, including preparing needed equipment and ensuring the work area is properly configured. Always ask, do we have needed supplies and personal protective equipment in the correct sizes? Is the equipment functioning properly? Do we have waste disposal containers available? Are they full? Be aware of your team member's status and their needs in order to support them. You should ask, are they fatigued? Proactively warn them during critical steps where fatigue may cause error. For example, when taking off a hood, warn them not to touch their face or wipe their brow. Are they overly anxious? In a calming tone, refocus them on the task at hand. Reassure them they will get through this. When beginning doffing, will you need a doffing assistant? Think through your local process and equipment. If you will need an assistant during doffing, make sure you have identified that person and that they will be available in the proper personal protective equipment before beginning the doffing process. Be aware of the environment and any risks it may pose. Ask, is there contamination of any areas, surfaces, or equipment? Are donning and doffing areas clearly designated? Are there any hazards in the environment? Be aware of progress towards your goal. You will be coaching the healthcare worker through donning and doffing. You guide the process and you set the pace. Letting your healthcare worker know how far they are in the process can be calming and support a steady and measured pace. Where are we in the process and what comes next? Pacing, are we moving too fast? Do we need to slow down? The observer is much like a team leader or coach. It is your job to set the stage for safe completion of the donning and doffing processes. You will lead the process. This includes conducting briefings to establish role clarity. Who will be responsible for assisting if it is required? It is your responsibility to ensure you have the right people available at the right time and that they are adequately protected with appropriate personal protective equipment. Additionally, you will need to anticipate challenges your healthcare worker may experience along the way. Is there new personal protective equipment in use? Have our processes changed recently? 
Are there any hazards in the environment that can be managed? This also includes asserting your leadership to manage distractions and guide the clinician through the process. You will facilitate effective communication. As the support system for your healthcare worker, you can employ several tactics to ensure communication is clear, accurate, and timely. Establish red flag words to immediately stop action. Ensure understanding by having all directions verbally repeated by the clinician. Red flag words or stop the line phrases are verbal shorthand for important information or protocol steps, phrases that will be quickly understood. Red flag words improve the efficiency of communication and reduce the amount of effort and time you spend getting across critical information. In healthcare, CUS words are commonly used. I'm concerned. I'm uncomfortable. This is a safety issue. These are easy phrases that require everyone to stop and pay attention. It is up to you to define and reinforce the red flag words. Use words that have a consistent meaning in your organization. You should have red flag words defined for a breach in protocol requiring a full stop but no immediate hazard, a breach in protocol and immediate hazard. Closed loop communication helps ensure information is received and interpreted as intended. Here, messages that are sent are acknowledged and verified. Closed loop communication should be verbal and explicit instructions that are repeated by the healthcare provider. Repeating instructions is critical in this situation. Your healthcare provider will likely be fatigued and stressed, known contributors to communication slips and lapses. Additionally, some of the personal protective equipment can degrade hearing. To address these challenges, use closed loop communication for each instruction given. Closed loop communication should be verbal and explicit. It should be used for each step of the protocol at both the beginning and ending of each step. Specifically, you should verbalize the next step of the process. The healthcare worker should repeat this back to you, and subsequently, you should verbalize when that step has been completed successfully. This pattern of communication not only ensures good information exchange, it helps to control and slow the pace of the process. While your primary role is a leader and coach, your healthcare provider may need physical assistance at points during the donning and doffing processes. During donning, you may assist at any point, as this is performed in a clean area with clean personal protective equipment. During doffing, you should remember five key principles. Minimize physical contact. Plan for when you will need a doffing assistant. Anticipate where you may need to assist. Protect yourself when you do assist. Once you assist, you are now contaminated. Discuss these points in your pre-briefing, where you review the process and clarify roles, and determine who will be stepping in at what points of the process. For example, in the doffing process, you may need to help the healthcare worker to remove respirator, gown, or jumpsuit. The points requiring assistance should be decided during the pre-briefing and process walkthrough, and a plan established at that point. The trained observer should not enter the room of a patient with Ebola but will be in the personal protective equipment doffing area to observe and assist with removal of specific components of personal protective equipment, as outlined below. The observer should not participate in any Ebola patient care activities while conducting observations. The following personal protective equipment are recommended for trained observers. Single-use disposable fluid-resistant or impermeable gown that extends to at least mid-calf or coverall without integrated hood. Single-use, disposable, fluid-resistance or impermeable gown that extends to at least mid-calf or coverall without integrated hood. Single-use, disposable, full face shield. Single-use, disposable, nitrile examination gloves with extended cuffs. Two pairs of gloves should be worn. At a minimum, outer gloves should have extended cuffs. Single-use, disposable, fluid-resistant or impermeable shoe covers. Shoe covers should allow for ease of movement and not present a slip hazard to the worker. Trained observers should don and off selected personal protective equipment according to the same procedures outlined for the healthcare worker. If the trained observer assists with personal protective equipment doffing, then the trained observer should disinfect outer gloved hands with an EPA registered disinfectant wipe or alcohol based hand rub immediately after contact with healthcare workers' personal protective equipment.